Hello viewers and welcome to Pioneer of Success. Continuing with the series on Raman spectroscopy, in the last video we explored about the scattering of light. Let's revisit it in terms of atmospheric scattering to understand why the blue coloration of the sky or the red coloration of the sky occurs during the sunrise, sunset or the different times of the day. So we all know that the uh, occurrence of day and night at a particular position or the place is governed by the rotation of earth. So if we consider a particular observer at this place, at this time he is experiencing night because it is out of sight of the sunlight. But with the slower rotation of the earth, it reaches to a time of the day when it starts experiencing sunlight, which is termed as the sunrise at that particular place. And slowly with the further rotation, it, the, it, it comes to a time of the day where the sun is just above the head, which we term as the midday. And with the further rotation, it experiences the sunset at that particular place. So if we consider three, these three uh, extreme positions, we see that the sunlight is experiencing longest path during the sunrise and the sunset, whereas it experiences shortest path to reach to the observer during the midday. So the point at the time of the day where the sun is just above the head is called as the zenith, whereas the other two extreme positions during the sunrise and the sunset is called as the horizon of the observer, which we, which we see in similar to this image where we see the sky and the earth to meet at a particular point. Now, when the, when the uh, sunlight enters into the earth's atmosphere, it does not pass linearly. It experiences scattering due to the different uh, size of the particles like the gaseous molecule, dust particle, water droplets, etc., which are suspended into the atmosphere. And the different size of the particle causes different types of the scattering. Like the Rayleigh scattering, that is the particle sizes which are much much smaller than the wavelength of the light it is interacting with, it causes the Rayleigh scattering. Like the gaseous molecules, which have a size very very smaller as compared to that of the 400 to 800 spectrum of the sunlight. Now this type of the scattering is highly isotropic; it scatters the light in all the directions equally, but it is highly dependent on the wavelength which uh, to which it is interacting. That is, it is inversely, inversely related to the fourth power of the wavelength. That is, the intensity of the Rayleigh scattering is inversely dependent on the wavelength it is interacting. So, the smaller wavelength of the light will be more intensely scattered as compared to that of the larger wavelength of the light. However, if the particle size is incomparable to that of the wavelength it is interacting, this type of scattering is termed as the Me scattering where this mean scattering is quite anisotropic which is uh, which scatters all the wavelength of the light equally but in the forward direction as compared to that of the back direction and similarly if the size of the particle is much much smaller than that of the wavelength it is interacting then it is termed as the geometric scattering now in the earth's atmosphere there are different types of the particles which are suspended like the uh, gaseous molecules like nitrogen oxygen hydrogen and other gaseous molecules which have a particle size which is much smaller than that of the spectrum of the sunlight that is from 400 to 800. So these contribute to the Rayleigh scattering of the sunlight that it interacts with. Now the Rayleigh scattering is highly wavelength dependent. So if we consider the two extreme conditions that is the blue and the red color, the blue color has a smaller wavelength as compared to that of the red color. Now, uh, since it is having a smaller wavelength, it tends to intensely scattered as compared to that of the red. That is, it, it scatters, the blue color scatters more intensely as compared to that of the red color. And that's what we experience during the midday time where the sun is just above the head. Since the sunlight has to travel the shortest distance, it is, gets scattered during its travel. And since blue light is scattered more intensely, we see the blue coloration of the sky. Now, the same condition also exists during the sunrise and the sunset. But the difference is at this sunrise and the sunset positions, the sunlight has to travel a longer distance. And now the blue, line, blue light, because it has a smaller wavelength, it cannot travel to a longer distance. Whereas the red light, since it is, has a larger wavelength, it can travel to a longer distance. But the blue light in this case is equally more intensely scattered in this condition also, but it fades out because it cannot travel to longer distance. 
and thus we receive the red light during the sunrise and the sunset due to which we see the uh, red color reddish coloration of the sky during the sunrise and the sunset and there is a contribution from the larger size of the particle which contributes to the me scattering like the water droplets ice crystals which are suspended into the atmosphere which causes this red light when it gets scattered if it gets scattered because of its larger wavelength it can travel to a longer distance it causes the me scattering causes a further forward scattering of the red light which causes which causes the red light to reach us to a longer distance it accelerates that uh, and thus we see this red reddish coloration during the sunrise and the sunset similar effects causes the white coloration of the clouds the clouds are mainly formed by the water droplets or the ice crystal which get condensed around the dust or the soot particles and which are having a larger diameter as compared to that of the gaseous molecules and thus it comes into the regime of the me scattering which scatters all the wavelength of the light equally when it interacts with the sunlight so when all the wavelengths of the light are scattered equally we perceive it as a white light and that's why the clouds appears white to us and the thickness of the clouds the density of the cloud at different position determines the transparency of the white we see but the white coloration of the clouds is mainly due to the me scattering by the different molecules or the particles that causes the formation of the clouds so in this video we have explored the different atmospheric scattering phenomena causing the different coloration of the sky during the different time of the day as well as the uh, the form the white coloration of the clouds thank you for watching and stay tuned for further videos